The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky. Yes, I won't sing do re mi, my voice I'll raise to sing in praise of LSMFT. And you'll praise Lucky's because Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Seek and take this tip, my friend. For better taste that's mild and rich, try Lucky's Perfect Blend. No doubt about it, Lucky's tastes better than any other cigarette. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Friends, when we say Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette, we mean just that. Not just as good, but better. For Lucky's always give you perfect mildness and rich, true tobacco taste. A happy blending that fine tobacco and only fine tobacco can give. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. That's important because a recent 38 city survey shows that millions of smokers are not happy with their present brand. Now those smokers, and any smoker who's the least bit discontented, should switch to Lucky Strike. Yes, friends, for complete smoking enjoyment. Be happy, go lucky because Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Remember, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, Jack Benny has been in bed with a touch of the flu. So yesterday, I decided to drop by and keep him company. As a matter of fact, I read to him for hours. With almost human tenderness, the rolling waves of the Pacific cast the tiny life raft upon the gleaming white sands of the tropical island. Uh, just a second, Don. Oh, what is it, Jack? Would you please fluff my pillow for me? Why, well, sure. Thanks. Now, continue reading, Don. Realizing that their arduous trip was finally over, Bert lifted Anne out of the raft and carried her to a little clearing among the swaying palm trees. Her clothes were meager and tattered, doing little more than to conceal her wealth of feminine charm. As he reached the clearing, she opened her eyes, and without a word being said, she realized she was safe in his arms. Her eyes showed gratitude, admiration, and love. She reached up and pulled his head down until his lips touched hers in a flaming, passionate kiss. Hmm. <laughs> 39, he says. <laughs> well, I'm going to finish it anyway. It was months before the rescue ship arrived, and during that time, they spent their days exploring the island. It was a tropical paradise covered with coconut palms, breadfruit, and banana trees. <laughs> One morning, while at the north end of the island, they discovered a cave the sea had hollowed out. Timidly, they entered. And when their eyes became accustomed to the darkness, they were amazed to find, running through one of the walls, a vein of solid gold. What'd you say, Don? <laughs> Don, Don, what'd you say, Don? Well, huh? Jack, you fell asleep. Oh, 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 I'm sorry, Don. See, your voice was so soothing that... Hello, boss, how are you feeling? I'm fine, I'm fine. I don't know why I have to stay in bed anyway. Well, Jack, you better follow the doctor's orders. But I've been in bed for two weeks. Look at all the fun I've missed. The Chicago Cubs spring training at Wrigley Field, the golf tournament at Hillcrest, Jane Wyman's formal dinner party last Wednesday... Of course, I probably wouldn't have gone to Janie's party anyway. Why not? He wasn't invited. I was, too. The second time I called her, she said it was all right. <laughs> She's a sweet kid. Boss, it's time for you to take your medicine. I have it here. Oh, pills, pills, pills. Come on, open your mouth and swallow it. Here's your aspirin. Good. <laughs> And here's your 
Here's your oreomycin. Yeah. And your four-way cold tablet. Yeah. 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 And your vitamin pill. Yeah. And here, take this. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. What was that last thing you made me swallow? A peach pit. We ain't got no garbage disposal. <laughs> Oh, stop with that. Has the mail come yet? I'll go see. You know, Don, I'm so tired and bored of staying here in bed. What day is this, anyway? Why, it's Saturday, March 17th. Oh, yes, yeah, St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, oh, which reminds me, Jack. Did you hear the one about the Irish girl who was so happy because her boyfriend gave her an engagement ring with a fake diamond? Why would she be happy to get a fake diamond? Because it was St. Patrick's Day and she was glad to get a sham rock. <laughs> Don, Don, vitamin bath. Don, control yourself. You're shaking the room. Don, stop. Now, Don, stop, or I'll tell everyone it was you who got stuck on the freeway and held up 50,000 cars. <laughs> now, watch it. All right. You want me to finish reading the book? No, nah, I don't think so. Turn on the radio. I want to hear the news. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to bring you some appropriate music in honor of St. Patrick's Day. Oh, my name is McNamara. I'm the leader of the band. Hey, that's Dennis. Oh, we're few in numbers. We're the finest in the land. We play at wakes and weddings and at every fancy ball. Don, I want to hear the news. Get another stage. We play the march from I want the news. I'll be marching along in the big parade on St. Patrick's Day. I'll be up hey, to Dennis me on the station, too. I'll march along the way and swing me over. Don, parade. try and get I the news, will you? Colleen. Okay. And I me want the news. To to hear to wear <laughs> Shake hands with all the neighbors and kiss the Colleen Gee, They're playing his You're records on every station. The me to dear old Donegal. There came Brannigan, Flanagan, Milligan, Gilligan, Duffy, McCuffy, Malak, and Mahorn. Rafferty, Lafferty, Donnelly, Connolly, Julio, Julio, Don, Julio, Julio, try and get the news. Okay. Donnegan, Donnegan, I'm sick. <laughs> oh, the Clancy. Oh, the Clancy. Whenever they got to say... Don, can't I get the news? The try another station, will you? Try another station. <laughs> can it be the breeze that fills the tree? Rare and magic perfume Well, at least he's singing my theme song now. Oh, no, it isn't the breeze. It's Brannigan, Flanagan, Milligan, Gilligan. Rafferty, Lafferty, Johnny, turn it off! That silly kid. All I wanted... All I wanted to do, all I wanted was to hear the news. Yeah, what is it, Rochester? The mail just came. Good, good. Here's a letter in a pink envelope with a lady's handwriting. Oh, that's probably a get well card for my girlfriend, Gloria. Hand it to me, Rochester. Let me smell the envelope. Here you are, boys. Let's see. Yep, that's from Gloria, all right. Perfume? No, hamburger. She works in a drive-in. <laughs> Ground round Gloria, they call her. <laughs> You know, she, she can chop onions faster. Get that, will you please, Rochester? Yes, sir. Hello, Mr. Benny's residence. Hello, Rochester. How's moaning low? Oh, well, the boss is all right, but he's still in bed. I thought he got up Thursday. He did, but he had a relapse. A relapse? What happened? He looked at the calendar, saw it was income tax day, and I caught him just before he hit the floor. <laughs> Put him on the phone. That's what I want to talk to him about. Okay. It's for you, boss. Hello? Hiya, Jackson. How you feel? A lot you care. You didn't even come over to visit me. Well, I wanted to come over, but since you're sick, I thought your house might be guaranteed. That's quarantine. <laughs> guaranteed. A natural mistake for a chap who celebrated his 21st birthday in a second grade. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And 
Now, what do you want, Phil? Well, it's about my income tax. I sent it in Thursday, but I don't know if I made it out right. What do you mean you don't know? Did you list your dependents? Yeah, I got them all, including the two kids and Ramley. <laughs> Ramley? You, you listed Frankie as a dependent? Certainly. But, Phil, a dependent is someone you support who doesn't do anything. Remley's in your band. Every week he sits in your orchestra with his guitar and... and... Say, you're right, he is a dependent. <laughs> yeah, and he's getting self-conscious about it. A couple of weeks ago after the show, he came to me and he said, Hey, Curly... I want people to think I'm playing this guitar. Will you please buy me a bow for it? <laughs> well, let's forget about empty. Is there any, uh, is there anything else? No, so long, Jackson. Look, I'll drop over and see you one of these days. Thanks, Phil. So long. Oh, oh wait a minute. Look, I've been meaning to ask you, will it be all right if Bagby, my piano player, misses Sunday's show? What's the matter? Is he sick too? No, but he just received word that his uncle died. Oh, that's too bad. Is Bagby taking it hard? Yeah, he's in deep mourning. He won't drink nothing but Johnny Walker Black Label. <laughs> Such devotion. Goodbye, Phil. So long, Jackson. <laughs> now, let's see. <laughs> Rochester. Rochester, where's the mail? There it is on the bed, and here's the latest Collier's magazine. Collier's? Yeah, the one that has that article about you. Oh, yes, the one I wrote myself. Let's see. Yep, they even have it mentioned right on the cover. From audio to video via radio by Jack Benny. Here it is. And, gee, look at that swell picture of me in color. Oh, wait a minute, Jack. Did you write that article in Collier's? Uh-huh. All by yourself? Without your writers? Certainly. I wouldn't trust my writers with an important article like this. They always try to make everything funny. But, Jack, they must have some serious moments. Never. Last week, one of them made out his will, and it was so good he sold it to Red Skelton. <laughs> Not only that, one of them wrote a letter to his wife. Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Dennis. I'm glad you dropped by. Oh, I just thought I'd come over and cheer you up. Well, thanks. You need cheering up. You look awful. <laughs> Look, Dennis. Dennis, what's the matter with you? When you visit someone who's sick, you shouldn't tell them they look awful. I shouldn't? No. You're supposed to tell them that they're looking well and that they ought to be up soon. Oh. Gee, Mr. Benny, you look great. Hmm. You ought to get up soon. Thanks. If you don't get up soon, you won't get up at all. <laughs> Dennis. Dennis. Dennis! Oh, now, now, Jack, Jack, don't get aggravated. You'll make yourself sick again. Well, maybe you're right. By the way, Dennis, a little while ago, we were listening to the radio, and we heard them playing your records on all the different stations. Oh, those weren't records, Don. That was me in person. In person? Uh -huh. That's ridiculous. How could you get from one station to another so fast? I drink Hattacall. Now, <laughs> Now, look, Dennis. Dennis, listen to me. Look, I'm sick. Eleven years ago, when you were just a kid, I discovered you. Yes, sir. I had faith in you and thought you'd go places. Yes, sir. I introduced you to my sponsor, and he thought you'd go places, too. Uh-huh. I put you on my radio program, and the critics heard you, and they said you'd go places. Now, for heaven's sakes, go already. <laughs> All right, I'll go, but that's a fine way to treat a fellow who came over to cheer you up. I'm cheered, I'm cheered. I don't have to stay here, you know. I can go and sing Irish songs on the radio. I know, I know. Just go. Yes, sir. That kid drives me nuts. Say, Don, it's exactly noon. Maybe we can get the 12 o'clock news. Turn on the radio, will you? Okay. Here came Brannigan, Flanagan, Milligan, Gilligan, Duffy, McCuffy, Malak, and Mahon. How does he do it? How does he do it? Don, turn it off. It's 12 o'clock. Now, there must be... There must be some station that has the news. Here, let me try it. Help me sit up, Don. Okay. Here you are, Jack. Thanks. We might get it on this station. And that's what happened in Washington today. This concludes our midday edition of the news. Oh, darn it. And now we'll continue with our recorded program. The one and only Cindy Lou will give her interpretation of My Heart Cries for You. Yeah. 
to lose. Don, look, I don't want that. I can't... I can't understand why we... Don, did you try the CBS station? Oh, no, I didn't, Jack. I'll turn on that one. Ladies and gentlemen, as is our custom every day at this time, we bring you a special attraction. And today, in this featured spot, we have the Sportsman Quartet. Don, the Sportsman, my quartet. They would like to dedicate their number to their boss, Jack Benny, who for the past ten days has been sick in bed. Oh, isn't that sweet? Take it, fellows. <laughs> With the present brand of cigarettes you've got And a recent survey made in over 30 cities Shows a million who are not Then we say that it is time for you To switch to mild and very tasty Lucky Strike Be happy and go lucky with the cigarettes you like Don, wasn't that nice of the boys to dedicate that song to me? It certainly was, Jack. Say, boss, the nurse will be here pretty soon. Nurse? What nurse? The doctor called and said he sent him one over. Oh, fine. Now that I'm better, he sends over a nurse. In the meantime, you better take your medicine. Come on, boss, open your mouth. Wait a minute, Rocha, are you sure you got the right bottle? Oh, sure, boss. The druggist typed your name on the label. He wrote, this medicine is for Jack Benny. Star of stage, screen, radio, and television two weeks from now if I mix the prescription right. <laughs> well, I don't care if he mixed it right or not. I'm not taking any more medicine. In fact, I'm well enough right now. Yoo-hoo! Anybody home? Oh, uh, Mr. Kitchell! <laughs> Hello, Mr. Kitzel. Hello, Mr. Wilson. It's nice to see you out from the freeway. <laughs> Gee, I thought I made up a joke. <laughs> well, Mr. Kitzel, it's really good of you to drop in and pay me a visit. Well, Mr. Benny, I came here not only to cheer you up, but my wife sent you this bowl of homemade soup. <laughs> see? Oh, I say, that looks wonderful. What's in it? What's in it? Carrots is in it, peas is in it, string beans is in it, a pound of tomatoes is in it, a cup of barley, some chives, onion, potatoes, and one matzo ball is in it. A, uh, a matzo ball? Yeah, in the shape of a shamrock in honor of St. Patrick's. <laughs> oh, yes. Look, a green matzo ball. Isn't it? Yeah. Just take a sample of this soup, Mr. Benny. You never tasted anything so delicious. Okay. Mmm. <laughs> you look better already. <laughs> See, that is good soup, Mr. Kitzel. But all the ingredients you mentioned were vegetables. Yet I thought there was a slight flavor of meat in there. And that's because for two hours, my wife was stirring it with a ham hock. <laughs> what? She's from the South, you know. 
No. Show sure, no. <laughs> well, Mr. Benny, I got to be running along now. I hope you'll all be well soon. Well, thank you, Mr. Kitzel, and, and thanks very much for the soup. Oh, you're welcome. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Kitzel. Goodbye, gentlemen. <laughs> You know, Don, that was so nice of Mr. K Don, what are you doing with that radio? Well, Jack, I know how anxious you are to hear the news, so I'm trying to get it. Oh. And now for the weather report. Due to low barometric pressure areas over the Pacific Ocean being neutralized by the warm moisture belt flowing in from the Mojave Desert, precipitation could be evident in the coastal areas with a high of 80 degrees being expected. Those who live in Oregon may have early morning fogs. <laughs> if you're in Northern California, you may expect drizzles. If you're in Southern California, the low will be 52, and if you're in Arizona, I'll follow you. If you're in Minnesota, Turn that off, will you, Don? All I want is a little news, and I keep getting... You want me to get that, Jack? No, no, I can reach the phone. Hello? Oh, hello, Mary. How are you feeling? That's good. Yes, I'm getting along much better. My picture in Collier's? Sure, I saw it. You're right, Mary. They really did play up my blue eyes. But I think they overdid it. Two would have been enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, Mary, I'm glad you called. Is there anything you need, anything you want, anything I can do for you? Just name it. What? Of course you don't get paid when you're off. <laughs> and you can stop that coughing. Well, look, Mary, I... Don't let me talk to Mary. She hung up when I told her she doesn't get paid. I can't understand... Oh, what... boss, the nurse is here! Oh, all right, show her in. Watch this, Don. I'll use a little flattery and she'll let me get out of bed. Here's your nurse, boss. Well, well, well. A man certainly is lucky to get a nurse as pretty as you. Hmm, they didn't tell me this was a mental case. <laughs> Look, nurse, I was just trying to be nice. Nice or not, I get 12 bucks a day, so stop flashing those blue eyes and shut up. <laughs> but, nurse... Now open your mouth so I can take your temperature. It's open, it's open. Wider. Uh, Wider. Uh, why do I have to open my mouth so wide? I forgot my thermometer, so I took this one off the wall. <laughs> well, you can put it back. I'm getting out of bed. Oh, boss, your doctor is here. Well, thank heaven. Show him in. This way, doctor. Well, <laughs> how's the little patient today? Wait a minute. You're not my regular doctor. You no, know, Dr. Christian couldn't come. He had a rehearsal. <laughs> Now, look, doctor, I feel perfectly all right. I want to get up. Yes, yes, by all means. I think it'll do you a lot of good. But, doctor, you can't let him up. Look at his face. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that. It's spring. Everything is turning green. <laughs> now, look, doctor. Now, on second thought, it may be safer if I give you an examination. At first, I'll listen to your heart. It'd take off your pajama top. My pajama top? Yes. Here, I'll help you off with it. <laughs> doctor! Well, a contour chest. Hmm. It looks so comfortable. Doctor, stop sitting on me. Now, I'm doctor. sorry. Now, look, doctor, I'm almost well. Why don't you just give me a shot of penicillin and I'll be okay? A shot of what? Penicillin. What's that? <laughs> what do you mean, what's that? It's one of those new wonder drugs like oromycin. Oro what? Myers, for heaven's sake, doctor, what college did you go to anyway? You just asked me for a haircut and you'll find out. <laughs> what? Scissors. Scissors. Comb. Comb. Tonic. Tonic. Get out of here, both of you. Do you hear me? Now, out, out, out. I don't know. I don't know who sent those people anyway. What a doctor and that silly nurse. Boss, boss, don't excite yourself. Well, I can't help it. Now I'm so upset, I don't know what to do. Well, Jack, would you like me to finish reading that book? No, no, turn on the radio. I still haven't heard the news. What station? I don't know. Try any station. Okay. Ahora, señoras y señores, para su placer en honor de esta ocasión, las traemos a ustedes una canción popular. Esperemos que les gusta a ustedes. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the very best Easter gift of all is the support you give through Eastern seal, Easter seals to children who need your help. These seals provide medical care, nursery centers, and many other things that are needed. So give and give generously to the Easter seal agency in your community, or send your contributions to Crippled Children, Box 779, Chicago, Illinois. Thank you. We'll be back in just a moment. And now let's join a St. Patrick's Day parade. St. Patrick's Day, we sing and dance and greet each other gaily and reach for milder lucky strike instead of a shillelagh. I always reach for luckies because luckies taste better than any other cigarette. The shamrock is a sign of luck and so is lucky strike. For every puff brings better taste to guy and gal alike. Sure. Luckies taste better than any other cigarette. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Yes, be happy, go lucky, because luckies taste better than any other cigarette. Now that is a fact. For fine tobacco and only fine tobacco always gives you that perfect combination of real mildness and rich taste. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So if for any reason you are not completely happy with your present cigarette, if it's too mild or too strong, switch to Lucky Strike for complete smoking enjoyment. You'll get mildness, smoothness, and taste all in one great cigarette, Lucky Strike. You'll agree, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. So be happy, go Lucky. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. Be happy, go Lucky, go Lucky Strike today. Remember, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. As the rescue ship slowly sailed from the island, Bert, Ann, and Valerie looked back toward... Excuse me, Don. Hello? What's that, operator? A transatlantic call from London, England? Put him on. Hello? How are you? Been doing a lot of sightseeing, huh? Oh, that's wonderful. You're coming back on the Queen Elizabeth? Oh, you love that. It certainly sounds like you're having a wonderful time. Goodbye. Now, Don, continue reading. Yeah? Jack, I don't mean to be inquisitive, but that call you just got from London, who was it? It was the wrong number. Now, continue, <laughs> continue reading. Yeah? Now, wait a minute, Jack. If it was a wrong number, why did you take the call? How often can you talk to London for nothing? <laughs> You know. Jack, if you weren't sick, I'd punch you right in the nose. Read the book, will you? Read the book. Send your contributions to Crippled Children, Box 779, Chicago, Illinois. Be sure to hear Dennis Day in a day in the life of Dennis Day. Stay tuned for the Amos and Andy Show, which follows immediately. <laughs> 